What's good everyone, it's Zigzag here. Welcome back to another GeoGuessr video. Today I have a pretty exciting one for you. I've basically brainstormed exactly how I think you should go about improving at GeoGuessr with the ultimate aim of becoming one of the better players in the community. Now, even if you're not someone who's looking to become a competitive player, this will still really help you in improving more quickly at the game. I wanna preface all the tips I'm gonna say in this video by saying that the most important thing you need to do to improve at any game or anything in general is to do it a lot. The repetition is what matters the most. guys. If you go and check any pro player's GeoGuessr profile, you're gonna see that they have thousands of games played. And this is the most important thing for you. If you wanna to get to that level, there's no skimping out on the games. I know when someone has less than a thousand games played that they can't be very experienced. It's just not possible. So for example, I have about 7,300 games played. By the standards of the people who play in Rainbow tournaments, I'd say this is a little bit below average. If we go over to Rainbow's profile, he has 8,700. He has a whole bunch of games played in the other categories as well. And then if we go and look at Steak, he understandably has 24,000 games played. So then the next natural question is what game should I play and how? And I have an answer for you. Of course, this is all a matter of preference and you don't have to do what I'm saying. But in my opinion, the best way to improve for the first 2,000 to 3,000 games that you play will be to be playing Diverse World No Moving Country Streak with a Country Streak script enabled. So I'd go and download Tampa Monkey here that'll appear in the top right corner here. Then go over to my friend Miracle Whips' page. This will all be linked in the description. Get the Country Streak script so that when you go to Diverse World, you click over here, you come into a game. I would say like setting a time limit is not a bad idea, playing on no moving like this and jumping into a game, you will have a Country Streak script in the top right corner. So every time you get the country right, for example, this one should be Mexico and that plate is what is this one again? Um, it's one of these ones. Maybe it is uh, Hawk or Haka. I think it's a Haka place, right? Yeah. So you guess Haka, you get the country right. And so then it says you guess Mexico, which it was, and then you get a country streak of one. I think it's just a really, really nice way of playing. It's low stress. You're playing against yourself. You're trying to get the best streak you can, and you can take things at your own pace. So I'd recommend when you jump into a game like this, being very intentional. You got to think about the signage, the road lines. We're going to talk more about all this in a minute the language, all this kind of thing. And you want to make sure you're playing in a way where you're actively learning things, actively remembering things and learning from your mistake, but also just having a fun time as well. Because if your ultimate goal is to become better, playing until you're not enjoying it anymore is actually not going to be achieving that goal. Because obviously, if you're enjoying yourself, you're going to come back and play more. So yeah, I think this one's going to be somewhere in Philippines. I think I've had this round before. Can't remember where it is. Let's just go somewhere over here. <laughs> and not getting close. I'm pretty sure that was on a rainbow play along at one point. You basically get the picture. It's not as glamorous as Jules, but I really would recommend playing playing Diverse World over playing Jewels because playing Jewels is less time efficient and also I just find the world map quite inferior to learn on for many reasons that I won't go into today. So as you can see, I'm currently sitting on 7,312 games played and I really wanted to get that to 10,000 by the end of the year as I told you guys when I got back from Germany. And so here I've created this whole document where I have a plan of how many games I wanna have played by certain dates. And then hopefully I'll be able to fill this out and reach that mythical 10,000 games played by the end of the year. I really do feel that to be competitive with the best players in the world, you really want 10 to 15,000 games played, if not more. Now, after everything I've said so far, it may surprise you to learn that I think there are actually two things that are better than playing Divos World Country Streaks by yourself. The first one is to go and watch educational GeoGuessr content where the creator is really trying to break down to you at your skill certain things that are essential knowledge to have memorized. For example, here I have this video I made a while back, 10 world maps you need to know for GeoGuessr. These chevrons in Europe, super helpful, especially for the Mediterranean countries. It's essential knowledge. And I just compiled 10 maps that I think are really important to have memorized. And you can find many such videos on my channel. So come down here. You can see I have a whole tutorials playlist that I've just added over here. I would say these videos here are kind of aimed at the intermediate skill level, but beginners and pros alike will also gain quite a bit from them. But there are many videos for different skill levels around the place. Geopeda has some really good ones for new players. And then for example, just watching someone like me or Rainbow play and explain the rounds as we play is probably a really good way to supplement your gameplay and to bring it to the next level. Near the start of the video, I said that I recommend about 2,000 to 3,000 games of Diverse World to start you off with. Because with that many games, you're gonna get a feel for where different things are in the world. It's really, really good. But the reason I didn't say 10,000, for example, is because I think it's also good to have specialities where you really start to learn the entirety of a country or region. So as for me, I've played 7,300 games, but I'd say at least a thousand of those were on the Australia map. And that experience of becoming one of the best in the world at a particular country
country really opens up your mind to what it's like to be a pro player. Because when I think about Australia in my mind, I can just picture all the different landscapes all around the whole country. Whereas when I think of Romania, sure, I know what some certain parts look like, but the whole country's kind of a bit of a mystery to me. So in the process of learning one country, you begin to understand what it takes to learn any given country. So I would say learning your own country, if it's a big one, is a good idea. Otherwise, for example, my Australia guide could be a good place to start. I've basically got every single meta about Australia in there. And there are some other really nice guides on YouTube as well. So when I had Australia under my belt, then I thought it's time to learn some other countries and become really competent at them. I'm learning Canada at the moment. I'm learning South Africa, Botswana, a bit of New Zealand, and a bunch of others as well. And I think it's all really beneficial to my overall gameplay. So I already mentioned watching YouTube videos as one of the ways that's really, really good to improve. And the other thing that I think can be better than playing just by yourself is going and watching Twitch streams because Twitch streams often involve a streamer who's quite good at the game, who can impart knowledge on you while you're learning. And related to Twitch streams, also, if you can get a friend who's better than you and is willing to play with you and has a bit of patience, that can be really, really beneficial as well. Because you can be sitting there together and what they see in the round might be completely different to what you see. There might be a whole bunch of clues and specific tells that you're missing that they instantly see when they see the round. The same goes for the streamers, which is why streamers are a really good option if you don't have a friend like that. Of course, in addition to video guides, there are also text-based guides, of which I have a bunch saved in this folder. Now, instead of linking these, I'll link you guys to the Plonkit Discord server, where basically there's a whole lot of discussion about metas and about world records, and where you can find all of these linked in one big hub. And I think the final thing I want to mention in this video is how you can go above and beyond and become that champion player. I think the way you get past the kind of skill level that I'm at is to actually go in here and study the coverage. You go over here to the map and you, you, you learn Russian roads. You click the peg man down here on the bottom right and you say, okay, what's this road like? I want to remember that there's this road here that runs east to west. Let me actually see what it's like. It's generation three, okay? We have white sand either side of the road, lots of trees either side, and just rinse and repeat for whole countries. And um, true, it doesn't seem possible, but then you see the guys and they're nailing the roads when it seems impossible. And that is how they're actually going and studying roads. And uh, to be honest, that's not the most fun. Uh, but if you want to be the best in the world and win that prize money and uh, have the glory, then I think that's really what you have to do. Of course, before you do any of that, you want to have all the basics under your belt. You want to know all the different signage in Europe and South America and which Google cars drive where and all that kind of thing. And then you can move on to this kind of thing, which is really going to set you apart from the best of the best. Okay, now that this video is over, I'll point you guys over to my tutorials playlist, which you can find linked in the description. Go learn about something that you haven't learnt about yet. Do start a discussion in the comments. Tell me what you think about my tips, if there's anything else that really helped you guys while you were learning, especially if you're a better player. And yeah, guys, remember, it's not only about trying to improve, it's also about trying to have some fun as well with a game like this. So don't really worry if you're not seeing the results, as long as you're having a good time while you're playing. That should really also be the ends in itself. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching the video all the way to the end of it. I'll see you guys in a video very soon. Like and subscribe. Till next time, goodbye.